Okay, so I thought I was recording this the first time. Turns out I wasn't. Now my throat's all dry, so I'm going to try and keep this quick. Alright. Two new episodes of Legend of Korra. Uh, so, first off, summary. What happened? Well, <clears throat> when we left off at, in episode 3, Zuko and uh, Korra's dad were... Uh, meeting up with the twins to protect the last of the four big criminals that are being freed by their leader, who's now an airbender. Uh, while Kor and her friends were trying to locate the airbenders uh, in Bossing Say, which we find out are being conscripted into the uh, into the army of the Earth Queen. And so, episode four focuses mostly on how they decide to break them out. Uh, ultimately, with Lin Bei Fong's help. She gets word from Zuko, and she goes there to, to pull Korra out uh, and take her back to Republic City. So, they break them out, and they, they, they break them out with the help of... Uh, apparently, Janora can still Astro Project, which is what she used to um, <clears throat> to help Korra at the end of last season. Which uh, I think is interesting that they're... Interesting that they're, that they're sticking with that. Um, as sort of a plot device. It, it continues to, you know, set her apart. I really like that they're including her. Um, and I find it interesting that her thing with, with the airbending kid they picked up, um, best romance Legend of Korra has had so far. Bar none. Uh, anywho, with, with one possible exception, but we'll get to that. So they, they free the airbenders. They fight off the Dai Li, just like old times. Um, <clears throat> But basically, the, the, the cost of it is, the Earth Queen basically declares war on Korra, I guess. It's not clear. She says it's an act of war, but it's not clear on who. She'll probably use it as a pretense to attack Republic City. Um, that would not surprise me. So, uh, that's another plot point where <clears throat> we just have to kind of wait and see how that develops. So, they free the airbenders, who all agree to go with Tencent to the Northern Air Temple, because they're so relieved to be out of prison. Uh, the, the look on Tencent's face is just beautiful. Um, he's so happy. It's, oh, I love Tencent. <clears throat> so, while that is going on, Korra and... Korra and Lin Bei Fong go to track down another report of an airbender, which ends up being Lin Bei Fong's niece. We meet Lin Bei Fong's uh, sister in a city that she basically created, which is just a big metal city where everyone can airbend and everything is made of metal. Uh, and it's a great, fascinating city, great designs. All the buildings are surrounded by basically these big metal flower petals that close at night. It's great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, and we get, we, we start to get hints of what happened with Toph's family. We find out that Toph had two different husbands Neither of them knew their husband, uh, their their fathers, uh, excuse me. And Toph apparently, like, deliberately, which kind of makes sense for her character, Toph deliberately gave them total freedom as kids. Um, but obviously that did not work out well for the family. So it remains to be seen. Uh, I, I guess we'll, we'll get some sort of flashback in uh, the next episode. There were hints that there were hints in the trailer that we're going to find out how Lin Bei Fong got those scars, maybe from her sister. So we'll find that we'll find out. <clears throat> um, and I have to say, I really like the character of uh, Lin Bei Fong's niece, Ola Olai. I'll have to learn her name too. Uh, I can't remember the villain's name either. <laughs> so uh, she she seems to be really interesting and you know funny and sweet. Uh, and she and Bolin really start to hit it off. So. Okay, I will abandon my dreams of um, Bosami, Asselin, Petra needs to die. Uh, so I'll, I, I will gladly give those up because I like the, dy the dynamic the two of them have. <clears throat> uh, she's happy with, like, she likes Bolin the way he is. Uh, we get a really sweet moment with the two of them. So, yeah, another new character. <clears throat> um, also... Uh, and I, I, I don't know if I said this in the last one, but this season I'm really starting to feel like the dynamic between Korra and Asami and Bolin and Mako is really clicking. Uh, and I like that. I like to see that. Uh, they're finally becoming compelling in their own right. Uh, Mako is ten times more interesting now that he doesn't. he's not being shoehorned into any crappy romantic subplot. 
Um, yeah, so he's he's much more fun to have around now that he's not dating anyone. Uh, at least no one on screen. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's all good. That's all interesting. Good setup. Um, and, oh, and then in, uh, in terms of the villains, we find we 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 come back to the villains with them breaking uh, the lead guy's girlfriend out of the uh, ice fortress prison. Which, by the way, Zuko, Zuko, I love you, buddy. But your plan to defend that place was piss poor. Yourself, granted, you kick ass. Uh, Kor's dad, who spent all of the last book getting the crap kicked out of him, and the twins, who spent all of the last book getting the crap kicked out of them, and two White Lotus guys, who always get the crap kicked out of them. Um, I, I think you're starting to go up here, dude. That terrible idea. So, yeah, they're defeated. Zuko was not killed, thank God. But she gets out, gets away. Um, and we get a great moment where they're in some sort of, like, ice truck uh, where they're making their getaway. And uh, the lead guy and his girlfriend, the, who has Combustor Man's power, who looks kind of like Azula. We'll see if that goes anywhere. They have a really heartfelt, um, <coughs> a really heartfelt reunion. They kiss and everything. And then it cuts to the Earth and they're like, uh, seriously, right now. Uh, <laughs> so I, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and then when the villains come back again, the, the lead guy has shaven his head and shows up at the island in Republic City where the rest of Tenzin's family is, uh, including Kaya. <clears throat> and uh, he shows up pretending that he's just another guy who suddenly can airbend uh, and he wants to go with them to the North Pole, or sorry, the Northern Air Temple, because uh, he thinks the Avatar is there. But when he hears that the Avatar... Um, is not there and has gone off on her own, he decides to leave before he does. Kaya recognizes him uh, and tries to stop him. They have a really, really intense fight. She loses and he gets away. Um, so, yeah, that's about it in terms of stuff that happens. Not a lot, n nothing big. Just more build-up, more setup. But I like that. The season has been much better paced so far. The first five episodes, I think, have really... They've clicked well, they've moved well, they've been interesting, but they've also been... They've had some small moments in them. Little bits of... Not not filler, but quiet moments. Um, and I like that a lot. I, I really like to see that in this show, because I think it's... Um, it's making the season much more solid than uh, the last two were, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so still a lot left unexplained. Uh, so there's not much I can really say about these episodes at this point. We need to learn more about the villains. We need to get a little bit more about Lin Bei Fong and just get a sense for where all this is going. Um, so I think maybe after this Friday, when the season will officially be half over, uh, I think we might have some more answers at that point. Uh, so, yeah, until after Friday. <laughs>